Okay, I'm going to videotape this uh, pretty much step by step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sportster and do a trike conversion on it. This is a 2004 Harley-Davidson Sportster. I ordered a DNA kit. At the end I'll give you the uh, name and phone number where I ordered it from. And uh, we'll do some reviews on it. Now I'm not getting paid by anybody. But I've been on uh, YouTube and haven't seen a whole lot of uh, putting the DNA kit on more of a step-by-step. -step. There's other companies that looks identical to the DNA, but it's hard to tell. So anyway, first thing I needed to do was get it up in the air because this is just my shop. So I went to Harbor Freight Tools and I bought this lift. It's an ATV motorcycle lift for 1,500 pounds. I paid $89 for it. I uh, left it on the side stand, I slipped it under, I jacked it up, it's sitting level, and it is very sturdy. So if you need a lift, this is the one I would think you should use. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and remove my saddlebags. I'll remove the seat just to keep it from uh, being in the way of other things. And I'll come back on in a moment. So first I need to tell you a little bit about why I selected the trike kit that I did and what I did to prepare to do this job. I searched YouTube, I searched the internet. Several companies looked like they had the identical one that uh, DNA had. Not sure if it is or not or if they just put their own name on it. The price was really good. They were all over the board. Some of them were three, four thousand dollars. Other ones were fifteen hundred. There was one for nineteen ninety-five, and the one I picked out was uh, twenty-one ninety-nine. Now the reason I picked that over the less expensive ones on YouTube is, or on, I'm sorry, on eBay, is because the fifteen hundred dollar one didn't come with a swing arm. So once you had the swing arm, you've got quite a package. The uh, one for nineteen ninety-five. I tried contacting the company. First I got put on hold and lost. I've tried to call them for about five days. Couldn't leave a message because their mailbox is full. Never did get through to them. I even contacted them through their webpage. They didn't return my call. So as far as I'm concerned, they lost my business right there. I picked uh, the $21.99 on eBay. It came with a swing arm. It came with the full axle. It had dual brake calipers already set up and uh, um, the swing, swing arm was made just for this particular Sportster. So I called and I talked to a young lady, seemed very knowledgeable, very nice, said she'd get it out right away, and uh, I went with her. Now I'm doing a tri kit because I have problems with one of my legs and uh, I've been riding trikes now for past 10, 15 years, and uh, I've had several, and uh, I picked up the Sportster very inexpensively, and I thought this would make a good trike kit. So I started looking at the Frankenstein. I didn't like it. I didn't feel it would be as stable because it had a very narrow wheelbase on the back. So I opted for this one, which was a lot better wheelbase. Uh, so I got the seat off. You know, that's simple in the bags. Uh, I, I looked in my climber um, repair manual for the Sportster. It told me how to get the exhaust off. It told me how to take the sh shocks off. It told me how to get the wheel off, the belt, the belt guards, uh, and it showed also how to get the uh, swing arm off. So even though my trike kit is not here, I figured I wanted to get started on it. So that's what I'm doing starting today. And I'll get to a certain point as I'm taking stuff apart. If I see a problem, I'll let you know. And when I start installing, if there is a problem with any of the attachments 
or anything not fitting or having to be modified. I want to let you know that too. I want you to have to know everything up front, which most videos don't really tell you about. Currently, I have uh, Vance and Hines long shots on here. I'm sure that they'll be too long and we'll hit the back axle. I'll take a look and see what I need to do uh, when I'm putting it back together to uh, uh, do it right. Okay, I uh, went into my book. It showed to take the uh, heat shields off. So I removed the back one. I don't think that front one is going to be in the way, but I'll see in after a while. Took out the bolts and everything. Slipped off the muffler. Those the slip-ons. Unbolted it. But when I did, I'm going to try to get in here close and show you. You see that bolt right there? That bracket is broken off, which is one of the hangers for the muffler. So it's a good time to be doing this. And when you find problems, you fix them as you go. Okay, folks, here's time for a lesson learned. Remember when I said I didn't have to take that exhaust pipe off? I ended up having to. Because down here on this cover with the three bolts on it, they're kind of a hex bolt. And my hex worked on uh, two of them, but that bottom one I didn't get it fitted in just right, and I damn near stripped it. So I had to loosen up the bottom pipe so I could get it that better so I didn't strip it. And I had to actually pull the top pipe because it would have been in the way of everything. It went right along that cover and down. So I needed to get at it. The other thing I ended up doing was I had to re remove the uh, foot peg and uh, that gave me a lot more room to get in here too. So now what I'm ready to do is I'm loosening the back wheel and I'm going to remove the back wheel on this thing. So let's see how that goes. If that goes good, I've got a grand total of about two hours into this. I'm coming close already. So as you can see, I removed the belt guard. I let the tensioners for the belt loose. I unbolted the back axle and slid it through. And now I'm ready to remove the back wheel completely and the belt. This has been so easy so far. I have never worked on a Harley except for rebuilding a carburetor on this one. I haven't done a lot of work on motorcycles at all, but so far this, this is just being a piece of cake. So you can see my belt is nice and loose. I'm going to remove the wheel now. So, I jacked it up a little bit further, removed the belt, and removed the wheel. Something I forgot to mention, according to Climber maintenance manual on this, if you're re intending to reuse that belt, it is it, it needs to be installed in the same direction as you took it out. So immediately use a Sharpie or something, put an arrow showing where the front of the motorcycle is, so you can put that back together later and use that belt possibly. I was told I could use a belt by one person, and another person told me that I would need a longer belt. But we'll wait and see what happens before I go and get into any expense like that. Next thing I'm going to do is remove that other shock and I'm going to remove the uh, brake caliper. I'm not going to take it apart yet. I don't want fluid all over the place. I'll take it apart when I'm ready to hook up the new one. Okay folks, I've got three and a half hours into this job. I just disconnected and pulled off to the side the reservoir for the rear brake because that there is the bolt for the swing arm and I would not be able to get at it if that was in the way. I also took off the clamp for the hose which connects to the swing arm and I slid the uh, caliper off and I've got it hanging up near the fender. So I should be ready as soon as I can find a one inch uh, socket to take that swing arm off there. Um, this is going amazingly clean and, and easy so far. 
I'm expecting to run into serious problems, but not yet anyway. So uh, I got to run to the store, get some stuff, and I will be back tomorrow with a, a one inch socket and we'll take care of it from there. So I got the one inch socket and that's exactly the size for the swing arm. And as you can see, the swing arm is no longer on it. It, uh, as soon as you broke the bolt loose, they came out real easy. And the swing arm just dropped right down. So, my wheels came in today. So I'm going to get tires put on them tomorrow. And the fender should be in tomorrow. And I'm hoping for my axle next week. I'll have to check the tracking, see what's going on. So, basically, I'm ready to put this thing together now. So, that's kind of what it looks like without the back end on it. Now, I was told that you could leave the fender on or take the fender off. I think I'm going to leave the fender on because it's a good support for the uh, seat and everything. And uh, we'll see how that looks. The photos I was able to find on the internet looked better with the fender on. Now I put my bags on the side and it'll fill in that gap and everything. So until I get the uh, axle, I guess I'm done for now. So I just wanted you all to see what tires and wheels I'm putting on this kit. These were on uh, eBay, brand new, aluminum billet, polished, 15 inch by 7, and they were 100 and, or 221 with free shipping. Well, that is not too bad. And these things are going to look great on it. Tires I got were Michelin's. Uh, Oh, by the way, these wheels have like a three and three quarter back space. That's kind of important on this. So, there it is with the brand new Michelin tires on it. I'm still kind of waiting on my uh, axle. I'm, uh, I'm an impatient person, but it'll be here soon enough. Christmas is coming up in a few days, so I really probably won't end up with much time to, to uh, work on it anyway. So now I've got that, now I'm ready to go to the next step.